This is the plant radio. It's a device that makes it possible for a human to listen into a plant. With the radio, we want to see how interaction design might help reconfigure the relationship between humans and plants. The purpose is to explore how we can integrate post-human theories and ideas in design practices. The plant radio is part of the growing co-design research project. Ultimately, that project is concerned with how interaction design might engage with complex climate change discussions by sensitizing humans to a post-human mindset, specifically through using digital technology to engage with plants. Later in this video, we will return to what it means to have a post-human mindset. Most people will have experienced that plants are living matter. They move based on the sun's position, they crawl along surfaces or forage water. This isn't just a primitive biological response, and several recent findings suggest that plants are sentient beings that have an ability to process information. That means they can learn, remember and apply knowledge. Plants are also social beings that share information and nutrients with their neighboring plants, either using underground networks or airborne chemical particles. With this, they help protect and nourish their kin. Some of these behaviors and activities are expressed through changes in electrical signals, and we can measure those with EMG sensors. This helps us reconceptualize plants from a passive being into a living sentient being. With this, we ultimately seek to spark an awareness of how human-nature relations are entangled and interdependent, reflecting our co-survival on our damaged planet. The plant radio taps into the electrophysiological signals of a plant and outputs these signals in three things. A running graph, a pulsating light and sounds. In this way, it functions like an old-fashioned broadcast radio that extracts sound waves from the air, processes them and outputs them as sound. Radios like this one has been a big part of our inspiration. We are also inspired by how EXD sensors are able to monitor internal organs in a human body by measuring difference in voltage. EMG sensors can also be used to measure electrical signals in plants. And in the plant radio, we translate these signals to sound and light signals. Like on the radio receiver or a biological monitor, this allows the user to interpret what they cannot normally see. Here, it is internal signals of the plant. Here we have a scenario of a day in the life of the plant radio. At 10 p.m., the atmosphere in the living room is buzzing with life. On the couch, two humans are conversing. On the table, a plant is trying to participate in the conversation, and its sounds fill the room through the plant radio. The human has gone to sleep, but is kept awake by the sounds and lights from the plant radio, because this plant happens to be nocturnal. In the morning, the human strokes the plant's leaf, and the plant reacts briefly. The plant radio seems to be out of battery. While the plant radio's battery is charging, the radio is disconnected from the plant. The plant radio is now fully charged, and the human has decided to move the plant to a different room to reduce the disturbance of the plant. The plant is now connected to the plant radio again. As the human leaves, the plant radio is filled with sounds and lights from the plant. We have based this design on two theoretical mindsets, posthumanist thinking and post-phenomenology. Posthuman thinking is concerned with leveling the hierarchy between humans and non-humans, and in this case, plants. Post-phenomenology is concerned with mediation and how humans make sense of the world through technology. Strictly speaking, post-phenomenology and post-humanism are not very compatible from a theoretical standpoint. But we think of the plant radio as a design that uses the post-phenomenological concept of mediation to make post-human matters tangible and sensible to a human being. We will explain this in a bit more detail because it allows us to explain why this particular design can be understood as a way to make post-human theory tangible in design practice.
Posthumanism is almost an umbrella term for contemporary theories that reject dualisms, especially the dualisms of mind-body and culture-nature. Many disciplines currently discuss posthumanist thinking, and this includes the field of design. Still, it is a challenge to apply these quite abstract theories in actual design practice, also because it is a fundamental break with the anthropocentrism of much Western thinking. One way of working with posthumanist ontology is to decenter humans and instead take the experiences, perspectives, and agencies of non humans seriously, which means understanding the ways that everything is situated, embodied, and non homogeneous. To do this, we chose a design approach that centers the plants with respect to their traits, uniquenesses, and otherness from humans, both during the design process and through the designed object itself. Centering the plant means looking for ways that humans can get access to aspects that we cannot sense of our own. This is where the theories of post-phenomenology come in, specifically the idea of technological mediation. The idea is that all technologies create and form relations between humans and the world. One of these mediations is found in the translation work done by, for instance, instrument panels, as we see here. We see this when the plant radio reads, records, and interpret the signals into data that humans are able to sense. The radio makes the signals cognitively accessible to humans. Another type of mediation is that the radio shows that plants are quasi-others. That is, technology helps us see that plants are actual living beings. People living with the plant radios have, for instance, reported how one plant is nocturnal and another always responds when someone passes by. And these examples allow us to conceptualize plants as a kind of co-inhabitants or roomies. As designers, how do our design choices make us better balance the relationship between all types of species, including decentering the human in designs that are made for humans? In our design, one detailed example of such choices is the decision to not include a power button on the radio. Not having a power button on a noisy device is an unusual usability choice. We might even say that we humans take our ability to turn off a device for granted. But from a post-humanist perspective, it makes sense. Because if we use posthumanist thinking to try to understand this world from the perspective of the plant and not the human, we get a conceptual framing for not making it possible to turn it off. We see the plant as a non-human actor as important as the human person who operates the radio. This is a small detail, but to us it was an important detail. From a posthumanist perspective, the omission of the power button allows the plant to express itself unhindered via the plant radio. You can dial the plant down, but you cannot turn it off. This is a tiny version of a much broader and much scarier story that if we turn off plants, the world as we know it will cease to exist. When designing the plant radio, we discuss agencies quite a lot. Whom do we design for? Who has agency? When is agency given? And how does the plant radio transfer or support relation buildings between all types of actors? Not adding a power button was a design decision made from the perspective of plants, however, by and for humans. And we are not blind to the irony of this paradox. We might think that we designed with the plant in mind, but the plant radio is ultimately designed by and for humans. Anthropocentric design decisions will always make it impossible for plants to escape being seen in a humanistic light. We see this as a field of tension that must be navigated by the designer. The point is to not always completely reject the human perspective in favor of the non-human, as this approach could lead to designs that humans can't or won't interact with. The point is to keep a nuanced and balanced perspective throughout the design process. The design itself may have been made with elements of human-centered qualities, but reflections it sets in motion for the human user can shift towards a more post-human outlook on the world. Summing up, as designers, we hope to have planted an initial seed that makes human users engage with the idea that plants are sentient beings too, worthy of recognition and extended care. <laughs>